Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone in the world. If you are admitted to KDH, then this webinar is just for you, as we will be telling you the next steps that you need to start your studies at KDH. Without further ado, we will introduce ourselves, the hosts for this webinar. Uh, first of all, I am Rafael. I am from the Philippines, and I am studying my master's in sustainable urban planning and design here at KDH. I am in my second year and hopefully finishing soon. Um, and if you have seen me before, I've been in, the, you might have seen me in the KDH Instagram where I post reels and I sort of give you a glimpse of how student life is here at KDH. And yeah. you with me? Hello everyone, my name is Srikar. I'm from India and I'm in my first year of master's program in communication systems at KTH. Just a year ago, I was attending these kind of webinars in India and now I'm hosting it, so feeling grateful. And just like Rafael here, I serve as KTH's digital ambassador. Uh, you may have seen me on the KTH Instagram page or read my articles on the KTH blog. And these platforms are where we as digital ambassadors share our experiences and insights into student life at KTH. So don't forget to follow us on these platforms. Great. Hey, Alison moms. My name is Ida and I work with information and service group here at KTH. Once you get to Stockholm, you might find me in the information counter at KTH Entree, where we assist staff, students, and the public with all kinds of questions. And if you ever send an email to info at kth.se, you might also receive a reply from me. Additionally, I also work uh, as one of the project leaders organizing your arrival days and also the welcome ceremony in Stockholm City Hall this August. So before we start with the important information, we'd like to tell you gratis. Gratis. Is that, did I say that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what does gratis even mean? Gratis means congratulations. So say gratis to yourself okay. and to your friends who got admission to KTH. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's dive into our agenda for today's webinar. First up, we are thrilled to introduce you to what will be your new home, Sweden along with your academic haven, KTH. We'll guide you through some of the essential steps to embark on your journey even before you arrive to Stockholm. The session will conclude with an exciting preview of your planned activities for the spring. And we are pleased to have Ida, who will outline your next steps and offer valuable tips on being a newly admitted student. While some of this information presented today will be specifically relevant for fee-paying students, rest assured that the insights offered will be beneficial sure. to all the attendees. And to wrap up, we'll address some of the queries that you raised during the webinar registration. And moreover, we invite you to use the Q&A function where dedicated KTH staff and students will be on standby to provide you with answers. Your engagement and curiosity are what make these webinars truly enriching, so make use of it. So let's start off by introducing the country and the city that you will soon call home, Sweden. And you see the blue and yellow Swedish flag in the picture. So let's talk about Sweden. And I have some interesting facts here. Ooh. Sweden is known as an open multicultural society with a tradition of welcoming students from all over the world. And Rafael, do you know what's the population of Sweden? Oh, no. Pop quiz. I Last time I checked, I recall it's about 10 million inhabitants, but it is the third largest country in the EU by land area, I think. Yeah, indeed. I come from a city whose population is around 14 million. So the contrast that I've experienced in Sweden is striking. <laughs> so Sweden feels very peaceful to me. And did you know that 17% of Swedes born in are born in another country and most Swedes speak excellent English makes it easy to get around in society. Hmm. And you can see here uh, a map of Europe, uh, and you can see it's Stockholm. It's a few hours flight from all major cities in Europe. And Ida, have you tried skiing? I have actually, and snowboarding. It's such a normal, normal thing maybe in Swedish culture, but yeah, we do try a lot of that. Have you? Yeah, I have tried it last winter. It was terrifying, <laughs> but it was very fun. And what about you, Rafael? I actually have, but... Let's say I just need to try it one more time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I will hi highly suggest to you guys to try skiing when you're in Sweden this winter. And coming to sustainability, Sweden is ranked as the world's second most sustainable country, according to UN's Sustainable Development Report 2023. The climate in Sweden 
varies a lot from summer to winter. The average temperature in January, when it's the winter, is minus five degrees Celsius. And in July, when it's the summer, the temperature is about 22 degrees Celsius. That's interesting. And Aurora Borealis, you see the picture in the, uh, in the slide, the, it's called the Northern Lights as well. And they can be occasionally be seen as far down in Sweden as Stockholm. Uh, interestingly, I have seen Aurora's last weekend. I'm so jealous. I've literally grown up in Sweden and I've never seen it. Oh, wow. That wasn't my first time seeing them, <laughs> but it doesn't stop. I, I actually heard that this year they say that it would be the best year to actually see the Aurora Borealis. Indeed. Okay. Yes, yes. The, the occurrence is far more frequent than last year, I say. Uh, and Sweden is known for being a progressive society. For example, Sweden is ranked five in the world when it comes to gender equality, according to World Economic Forum's Gender Gap Report 2023. And if you want to know more about Sweden, study in Sweden is a great asset. You can head on to their website, that is studyinsweden.se to know more. And we have a question from a student who asks, is it particularly difficult for students from tropical countries to move to a place like Stockholm? Uh, both Rafael and I are from tropical countries, so I can give my opinion and maybe Rafael can add his perspective. So I have experienced my first winters in Sweden recently, and it was all right. It wasn't as bad as I imagined it to be, but moreover, there's heating in all the homes inside and inside of public transports as well. So the winter inside my Indian home would feel much colder than a typical Swedish home because we don't have heating in, in India. And also, there's a Swedish saying, there isn't really bad weather, just bad clothes. Did I get it right, Ida? Yes, uh, so, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so if you are dressed properly, you don't have to worry about the cold weather. My motto is layers, layers, and layers. And Rafael, what about you? Yeah, definitely. Layers is a very important when adjusting to the Stockholm winter. Um, as for me, my first experience in, of winter here in Stockholm was during my first year when I came here to Sweden. And it was the best. Like, define adventure. That is my first winter experience here in Stockholm. But speaking of Stockholm, let's proceed to giving you a little bit about Stockholm. So what a beautiful view you have in this slide right here. It's a bird's eye view of the parliament building uh, near Gamla Stan. So, okay, you are coming to Stockholm, which is a city that has an urban appeal balanced with centuries old history and closeness to nature. With its 2.4 million inhabitants, it is the heart of Swedish trade and business life. And here we have another um, video, uh, or let's see if it will start moving. <laughs> so while, I, while we show you this amazing footage of the overview of Stockholm, you see here earlier, there's a, the city hall. And we, have, um, we know that there is the Stockholm archipelago. And like, people really go there to view the, to have the adventure with the islands in the Stockholm arch archipelago. So, but Stockholm, uh, the city itself, is built on 14 islands and the archipelago, 24,000 islands stretching out into the Baltic Sea. Stockholm is home to 85,000 students and is known for its rich cultural history and closeness to nature with its 26 city parks. Furthermore, Stockholm is ranked as the fifth most livable city in the world, according to several rankings, world rankings. Um, Stockholm is a great example of a major city in a country with low population density. And that means low rise buildings and a lot of parks and sprawling green open spaces. That's something that I really love. Definitely. That was really a selling point for me coming into Stockholm. So we have another question from a student. How, it is, how is it uh, getting around in Stockholm? The transportation in Stockholm, is it easy? Is it difficult? What are the methods of going around? Sai, would you? have an insight on this yeah uh, i love the public transport in stockholm the connectivity is really good and i have a monthly pass which gives me access to commuter trains metros buses trams and ferries so also students have a significant discount on transport which keeps our traveling cost low yeah indeed i also personally i since i live very near campus i love to walk i, I do not have this um uh, all day or all month pass. Um, I just walk to school every day. And even when I uh, try to go to the groceries or the, the things that I need, I try to walk and sort of like cherish the beauty of the city. And that's what a lot of people also love to do. Uh, 
But talking about transport costs, let's go into quickly a bit about student life uh, and how what you might be spending on uh, as a student here at KDH. Um, according to the Swedish Migration Agency, the living expense is at the least 10,314 Swedish crowns per month. That sum includes everything you need to have a great time in Stockholm. The amount depends, of course, largely on what type of accommodation you require. But regardless, if you get an apartment in central Stockholm or outside the city center, the standard is very high and transport is always close. Otherwise, cycling is a good and student-friendly option to get around. Even in the winter, there are brave students and professors swapping their bike tires just to be able to use the bike to, go, to get around. The cost of living in Stockholm it will, of course, highly depend on your individual lifestyle and habits. In our social media channels, the blog and on Instagram, you will get relevant tips and tricks from other students. So make sure to, to check that out because uh, there are really useful hacks there. But for us too, uh, and for KDH blogger and Instagrammer Sam, shown on the screen right now, this is sort of like an estimated breakdown of our expenses. Um, I, I tried to estimate it as best as possible. Um, and I found myself to be spending on a monthly basis almost close to the estimate of Swedish Migration Agency, wherein I found a private housing that came uh, with food, um, about 8,500 crowns, and I spent the rest um, to cap it off at 10,000 crowns. Um, like Samantha, I my insurance budget is covered by my scholarship. And your side, how was yours? Uh, my monthly budget, like you see, is around 7,750 kronas. And this keeps changing from time to time. I have taken up a swimming pass recently. Okay. So it's a little higher now. In general, I would say your housing would be the major part of your student budget here. Also note that the budget changes from person to person. You can see that Sam's and uh, Raf's budget are different. So like Raf said, you can head on to our uh, KTH blog and also the Instagram page to see uh, tips and tricks on how, to, how you can save your money and also student discounts around. So do follow us on these platforms. So let's uh, move on to the next part that is KTH, your new university. KTH over the last 190 years has gone on to become one of the most prominent, more prominent technical universities in Europe, attracting travel uh, talent from all over the world. Being a KTH student uh, involves more than just engaging in studies, but choosing KTH, but choosing KTH, you gain access to a vibrant student life and a prestigious academic environment. One of KTH's most important goals is that all graduates have up-to-date knowledge and tools to move society in a sustainable direction. And uh, sustainable development is a natural aspect of Swedish society and an integral part of KTH's operations and spirit. What you see in the picture here is from the clock tower at the main campus, which Rafael, I, and some other student ambassadors visited. And Rafael, your Instagram story today, uh, you posted about this location. Yes. Have you guys seen the Instagram story today? So I posted um, a drone shot of this clock tower. Of course, you won't have that same view of the drone shot unless you're flying or, or something. But um, definitely, it's one view that you should not miss. Um, particularly, I recall that uh, you can actually, there are limited times that you can actually visit this uh, viewing deck in the clock tower. And one opportunity that you shouldn't miss is by joining the KTH, no, no the THS. Uh, international reception, wherein they have activities such as Amazing Race for uh, new students and new master students coming to KDH. And one of them is actually a station in the clock tower. So that's like the uh, limited amount of time that you're actually, uh, you have that view of this yep. place in KDH. Definitely. Don't miss that if you have the opportunity. And KDH was established in 1827. And you see the king the reigning king of Sweden in the picture, Carl Gustav XVI, who is the guardian of the university. Since the start, KTH has been the center of many of the technological advances in Sweden. Uh, in the 1950s, the country's first nuclear reactor was installed on campus. And at the same time, Sweden's very first TV station went on air across the street. Uh, KTH has over 13,000 full-time students from all over the world. Of them, around 1,500 are international master's students. 
KTH also attracts around 2,000 PhD students, many of them from outside of Sweden. KTH has around 840 teaching staff and over 300 professors and a staff of around 5,000. That is a lot of stats for you. <laughs> uh, and you can see in the picture uh, that's the inside of the library and Rafael, I love the circular seating in the library. Oh, yeah. I often sit together with my friends to work on projects and assignments. Mm -hmm. What is the favorite part of you um, in the library for you? Personally, I like the silent reading room because, you know, I just you gotta keep my silence when I'm Definitely. studying. Yeah. <laughs> keep the focus. Yeah. But talking about KDH and its academic life, uh, something I, I will be telling you, reminding you of some things um, that you might already know, but I to ensure that you have made the right decision. So some statistics regarding KDH. Um, KDH is ranked 73 in the world, at least in the latest 2024 QS World Rankings. And it's also top 50, for example, in certain fields like electrical engineering, material science, mechanical engineering, architecture, and civil engineering. And what you see in this video is a beautiful shot uh, made, uh, recorded, and posted by my, our KDH co-digital ambassador, uh, Dinara, of the e-building at KDH main campus. And you'll see um, the frescoes or the, the painting on the ceiling actually depicting um, the mining engineering and the other engineering fields that sort of like tries to replicate the education in KDH, which is pretty interesting. It's like, ooh, very royal. <laughs> <laughs> and so what we also have here um, uh, are the five campuses in and around Stockholm. So we have the KDH main campus, which is located at the edge of central Stockholm in the Royal National Park. So if you see on your screen, you see... Uh, the main campus with the student union, library, KDH entree, the courtyard. And if you look to the right, we have this sprawling green lush forest, which is so beautiful. And it's sometimes I like after exams or after stressful projects, I just like walk in the forest and try to release the stress. <laughs> yeah, nature. The campuses are strategically placed to promote cooperation with industry in defined areas. For example, research and education at KDH Flemingsbury is focused on the overlap between technology and medicine. Flemingsbury is one of Northern Europe's most prominent centers of medical engineering in terms of both research and industrial activity. On the main campus, you will find the main building with a beautiful courtyard, KDH library, the student union, a number of labs, and also some of the student rooms provided by KDH accommodation. So I can actually even see my own uh, private accommodation here on this drone shot, which I actually just walk across the road to get to the university campus. Can you see yours? Oh, you don't see my account, okay. <laughs> but you can see KTH Shista where most of my courses are at. And I have okay. a few courses in the main campus, but I love the courtyard and the KTH Entree is usually my meeting spot with friends. Ah, and it's across the beautiful lake over there. Yeah. The I, road, to, yeah. road to the main campus. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And there are many beautiful lakes inside of the Royal National Park. So I love strolls as well inside it. Nice. Okay, and so now we will go to studies at KDH. Really briefly, um, what is good about the studying at KDH is there is a personal approach to education. And something very interesting, and it surprised me uh, the first time I came to KDH, is that we go by first name basis, even to professors. So, for example, um, when I uh, entered KDH in my first year, the professor introduced himself, as, um, let's say, Daniel, and uh, we had to call him Daniel. So it's like when I ask a question, I was just so used to calling the professors like, sir, or, yeah. or Mr. <laughs> but but, but, but to yeah, it, it, it took a little bit of time. But then, of course, with utmost respect, we call them by their first names. And I think that's something that's really nice. Um, it's a very nice culture that that uh, is here in KDH. Um, but uh, continuing the overview, um, with the master's programs, they are usually two years. Some are one year. And this consists of first the first three terms um, of academic courses, while the last term of research or a degree project. And the class setup um, 
consists of lecture seminars, teamwork assignments, lab work, and, and individual studies. And generally, you will study one or two courses at a time, or sometimes um, like one major one that spans across a semester, giving you the possibility to focus better on one subject at a time. If there are written exams, these are done at the end of each course. And something briefly about the facilities, KDH has an extensive infrastructure for research and innovation with many advanced and state-of-the-art research environments and facilities such as labs, equipment, and learning environments. So we got another question um, in the registration of this webinar. Um, so some one, this question was, are the courses very demanding at KDH? What do you think, Sai, about this? I would say it depends on the program and the courses that you choose. Well, I was overwhelmed with the coursework in the beginning because I was not, I wasn't used to the practical oriented learning style here at KTH and my duty as a student ambassador as well. But I'll say you will find your balance soon and it, sh it should be manageable. I would suggest you to not procrastinate and don't keep your submissions until the last minute yeah. and you should be fine. Yes. <laughs> and... Uh, Let's move on to the next step. That is now Ida will share with you your next steps as a newly admitted student. Over to you, Ida. Yes. You guys have shared so many fun things and I'll go into a little bit more serious and- But important. Imp very information heavy and yes. important information. But yeah, we're gonna talk a little bit about your next steps now that you have got your admittance to KJH. So the next step is to pay your first tuition fee if you are a fee paying student. So after the 3rd of April, you'll receive some payment information on how to pay your fee. And this information can also be found in LADOC, which is the student administration system here in Sweden. To access LADOC, you'll use your universityadmission.se login details. Uh, and there you can find your payment instructions and all the necessary information on how to pay this tuition fee. And the deadline for payment is the 31st of May. So a very, very important date to remember. Um, the, the tuition fee payment must be made by account deposit or transfer via a bank. And the payment must be made in Swedish krona. So please note that payment by card is not possible. If you want to ensure that your payment has gone through, you can always log into Lardog after a few days after your transfer, just to ensure that the payment has been received. Um, you can read more about the payment procedure at new at KTH website. And if you are a tu tuition fee paying student, you must have paid the first installment before you apply for your resident permit which kind of makes us a smooth yeah. transition over to your next step as a fee paying student applying for your resident permits. So one of the most common questions we receive is of course regarding the resident permit. So let's dive in for a bit in this very, very important topic. If you are not a citizen of the EU, of an EU or an EEA country, you must apply for a resident permit to study in Sweden. And the best way to do so is to submit an application online via the Swedish Migration Agency website. As mentioned, if you are a tuition fee paying student, you must have paid the first installment of this tuition fee before applying for a resident permit. Since the resident permit process will take some time, we do recommend that you pay the installment and start the application for the resident permit as soon as possible. The Swedish Migration Agency will also have to check your passport for, before a decision can be made. So you may therefore need to show your passport at a Swedish embassy or consult general. In some cases, you will not require to show your passport. For example, if the migration agency have already checked your passport during a previous visit. But if you need to show your passport, be sure that the migration agency will contact you with information on how to do so and when. So we're gonna have a little bit of a slide in there. So, because if you're interested in a part-time job, it's good to know that no work permit is needed for mm. students in Sweden, which is really handy, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and also KTH admitting students can apply for a two-year permit, which is handy if you do in the two-year master of course with us. But remember, you must also be able to prove that you can support yourself for the entire period for which you're applying for the permit. 
So some good advice that we usually share is, of course, to have a look at the new FQTH website where you will find more in-depth information and the relevant links to the Swedish Migration Agency website where you find everything you need to know about requirements and how to apply for the resident permit for your studies. Yeah, I would say the application for the two-year permit is a time saver. That's yeah. very important information to me. Yeah. So if you can, of course, do so, but just make sure that you can prove that you can sustain yourself. Uh, but yeah, there's some tips for faster decisions. So we had a look at uh, the Swedish Migration Agency uh, and just had a look at what you can do to increase your chances for a speedier decision. So one of them is, of course, uh, to apply as soon as you paid your first installment of your tuition fee. This gives the migration agency more time to process your application and thus increase the chances that you will be notified before the semester starts. And that's the earliest four months before start of studies, usually. Uh, the easiest way to apply for a resident permit is um, for higher education is to use the e-service on the migrationverket.se. Uh, so that's the, um, the website that you can see right there. Really important, gather all of your documents. If you need to supplement anything of the required documents later, it will take longer for you to receive your decision. So just gather all your important documents, make sure you go through a, a little bit of a checklist, just have them all to hand before you start applying. And make sure you have a valid passport. You can only get a resident permit for as long as your passport is valid. Yeah, and we also will briefly just mention housing uh, as we will be hosting a dedicated accommodation webinar in the next coming weeks about this, uh, where we'll be going into further details on finding accommodation. But just a few brief things here. So tuition fee paying students doing a full master's or bachelor program, including scholarship holders, are guaranteed accommodation for up to 24 months depending on the start date. The application for housing, exclusive for fee-paying student group, for the fee-paying student group, will open in May and is done via the KTH website only. So just remember that it only happens through the KTH website. Make sure that you save all of your questions regarding KTH accommodation for the webinar, which will happen on the 16th of April. And if you are guaranteed accommodation and how you apply, all of that depends on your types of studies at KTH and if you pay tuition fees. So please have a look at KTH accommodation at the KTH website for more information about that. Yeah, and uh, the video you see is Sam's yeah. accommodation at Malvina Suva, mm. which is one of the four locations where KTH offers accommodation. Uh, we have received a few questions about housing for EU students yeah. due to a change in Swedish law limiting universities' possibility to rent out housing to non-tuition fee-paying students. Uh, instead, uh, we have some tips for you to find accommodation here. Firstly, you can visit the KTH blog for inside tips. And Lorenzo, our uh, fellow digital ambassador, has written a very informative article on the KTH student blog about finding your own accommodation. You can also look into large subletting sites, preferably that offer insurance. Uh, you can join accommodation groups in Going Connect app and link up with other students who are also looking. Maybe you could find your perfect flat mate match there. <laughs> if you haven't heard about Going app, we will talk more about this later on in the presentation. Right. And Sai, I think you just posted one uh, really, really informative blog post about KTH accommodation options, right? Yes, definitely. I posted a comprehensive accommodation uh, blog post, uh, which includes all the KTH accommodation and also links to finding your own accommodation. So you should definitely check out the blog post. Yes. Yeah, that's really great. But yeah, before we move on, let, let's just summarize your next steps. So if you are a fee-paying student, pay your first tuition fee. Also going for fee paying students, apply for your resident permit for your studies. And for all students, of course, start thinking about housing already. Yeah, but moving on, we're gonna talk about some valuable tips that we have to start your KTH journey, like really great. Um, so yeah, we have, some questions received about insurance. And one of those questions is, 
Is it true that health insurance is already covered by the tuition fee? So we're going to talk a little bit more about insurance in general. So all students at KTH, that is both fee-paying and non-fee-paying students, are insured through a basic personal injury insurance. This means that you're covered when you are on KTH premises and during travel to and from KTH. However, it's crucial to make sure that you have additional medical insurance cover coverage. In case of emergency, if you fall ill or hurt yourself during an off-campus activity. If you are a tuition fee paying student admitted to KTH master's or bachelor's program or a student holding a KTH scholarships, KTH provides you with a comprehensive insurance called Fast Plus um, that you can see here in the left uh, of the presentation. So for our non fee paying students, that could be students from an EU or an EEA country who are exempt, exempt from paying tuition fees. You are not provided with any additional insurance coverage through KTH. Insurance coverage needs to be purchased by the students themselves. You can, of course, always bring your European health insurance card, and this should be filled in, filled out by the social insurance office in your home country. With this card, you're entitled to the same standard patient fees as Swedish citizen for emergency health care and certain types of non-emergency health care as well. For more details, please consult with the social insurance office in your home country. Additionally, we can talk a little bit about home insurance. Uh, this, is usually, this usually covers personal property, liability and legal expenses. Most home insurance should also have or could have travel protection in case of illness or accident. Depending on your student group, uh, you may already be entitled to insurance coverage through KTH, which covers aspects of a good home insurance plan. But make sure uh, that you read up on all the terms and conditions on this important subject on you at KTH website and email us at info at kth.se if you're unsure about anything. And now we will proceed to uh, the support that you may receive as students in KDH. Coming to study in a new country can be a major change to your life, of course. To help you settle in, KDH provides a welcoming environment with a range of support and services. So for example, uh, each one has a pro program coordinator for each program uh, who will be your key academic contact during your studies at KDH and will be able to help you with any study-related concerns that you may have, such as help with registration, even finding exchange uh, abroad studies, um, or help with certifications for certain educational requirements. Um, another uh, service or support that KDH provides is the Stockholm Student Health Services, um, wherein you can receive counseling and support if you struggle with issues such as psychological ones related to your studies from a doctor, nurse, or social counselor. The staff is bound by professional confidentiality, and the service are free of charge. Uh, also, we have KTH Hallen. This is the uh, campus sports facility, which you may have seen in the KTH blog and in the Instagram, which some of our bloggers and KTH Instagrammers have shot uh, videos there. Yeah, you also have the Center for Academic Writing and Rhetoric, which offers students at bachelor's and master's level support in all stages uh, of their studies and in all types of academic texts and presentations. The Student Union, THS, aims to make you feel as welcome as possible at KTH by arranging activities to help you make new friends or find, new, uh, find your way in, in the society. At KTH Entree, that I was mentioning earlier, is a central information and service hub for students. They, they can also put you in contact with FUNCA, the additional support for students with disabilities. Yes. Very useful. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, now we're going to smoothly move over to talking about your arrival to KTH. But we will cover this a little bit more thoroughly on our webinar on the 21st of May. But we wanted to share a few glimpses of what your first few weeks with us could look like. So when planning to uh, arrive at KTH, we really encourage you to come to one of our arrival days. These days are great ways to kickstart your time at KTH and connect with your fellow course mates. If you decide on arriving on one of our arrival days, you can enjoy 
Additional services offered such as student guides welcome you at Arlanda Airport and also transport buses uh, from Arlanda Airport to KTH. The Student Union, which we talked a little bit about earlier, uh, THS, uh, representatives will also participate uh, to get you in the spirit of being a true KTH student. But even if you don't come during the arrival days, there are an extensive introduction program offered by KTH and the student union during the first weeks. However, the benefits of arrival during the dedicated arrival days are many. Um, so, and apart from those activities, there's also opportunity to join a pre-sessional courses in English, which will take place in the main campus that combines study skills and English for academic purposes. Particip participation is free of charge uh, for fee paying students and scholarship holders and it's a non-credit bearing course. There is also an option of course to take a course in Swedish in August before the start of the academic year. Swedish A1 for engineers. Both these pre-sessional courses are optional and offered on the KTH campus from the 5th to the 21st of August. And if you are interested in joining any of these language courses, the application opens in May. Yep, I have registered to the Swedish A1 course have you? and I've oh. completed it and now I'm doing the Swedish for advanced beginners. Oh. So I would recommend that highly for you. Get the bra. Get the bra. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... We want to help you all the way to campus, meet me and my friends and the current students while we bring you closer to arriving at KTH. Join our upcoming webinars where we have invited KTH staff members to share their expertise. We have one webinar on uh, 16th of April on accommodation at KTH. Uh, this webinar, Lorenzo and Samantha will talk about accommodation at, as a KTH student, both if you are from EU or outside of EU. And another webinar is on 21st of May, will be on your arrival guide to KTH. Uh, at this webinar, me and Ira actually yeah. will make you uh, make your arrival as smooth as possible. We will talk about arrival days and other happenings that are uh, that are good to know as newly admitted KTH student. Absolutely. So you can register to these webinars at new at KTH. Uh, apart from these, uh, at new at KTH, you can also find more information about the regional networking events. Uh, in the regional uh, events, you will be able to meet the KTH staff and students from the region or country that you come from. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity to ask questions to us and network with fellow students. You also register to this at new at KTH. That is kts.se slash new at KTH. And there are other program specific events. Uh, there are an opportunity to meet with and ask questions to your program representatives, such as program director or other KTH staff members and uh, current students as well. KTS would send out invitations directly to students admitted to the master's program that offer these events. Actually, the other day we got a we got an Instagram uh, message uh, asking, "Oh, so there there is a KTH student that contacted me. This was an admitted student, mm -hmm. um, and they were asking us, the digital ambassadors, like, is this uh, legitimate or is this a scam? So <laughs> I like to say that it's a legitimate uh, reaching out to you." Um, of course, this is optional, but it's highly recommended, especially to get out the most information that you can get from your preparation towards KDH. I think like talking to a student, getting to know about student life and even the courses, these are some things that you cannot really get so much from, although the website has a lot of information, yeah. but the student perspective is something very precious that yeah and if you are from communication systems or you got admitted into ECS department you might receive an email from me as well to connect with me oh, so just must be a scam. <laughs> <laughs> not a scam <laughs> just schedule a meeting with me and you can talk to me directly <laughs> so right. next up uh, okay we have q and a yes so now we will be addressing your most asked questions the questions that you guys sent in when you registered so how will we be doing this? I will be reading out the question and let's see who among you will be answering. Yeah. So the first question that we got uh, most asked is, do we have to accept the offer somewhere? Yeah, that's a good question. If you've been accepted, I can take this one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yes, if you have been accepted to KTH through university admissions, you are not required to access 
accept your offer. However, if you decide not to attend the program, please be sure to decline your offer through your account at universityadmissions.se to make the seat available for a student that is on the waiting list. For information regarding joint programs, including EIT, RMS Plus, and Nordic 5 Tech, please contact the coordinating university regarding that. Yeah, so you might be worried like, oh no, what do I have to do? But actually, you just have to yeah. let it go. Yeah, like, let it, it go. It, it, <laughs> it will proceed. <laughs> okay, so then our next question, if conditionally admitted, where and when should I upload the documents that testify my bachelor studies? Maybe, Ida, you can answer I'll this I'll take again. that one as well. So if you've been conditionally admitted to studies at KTH and have not yet submitted your bachelor's degree, you have to present your original degree certificate or diploma and your official transcript of records in your original language and English translation to the KTH admissions office. To do so, you should upload your documents. Uh, it's really important that this is in color uh, to your university admissions account before the 31st of October this year. If you are unable to upload your documents before October 31st, you need to contact us at KTH admissions office as soon as you have received your documents. You will receive information about this when you start your studies. Please note that you're welcome to start your studies, even though you have not yet submitted your documents. Okay, so that's a very important detail, actually, to yes. submit your documents in color. Yes. Okay, so now we have a next question. Uh, any one, any on-campus jobs, assistantships, or research opportunities during studies which can be applied prior to enrollment? Maybe yeah. Sai can answer yeah, this. Yeah, guys. <laughs> uh, in May, the recruitment for becoming a digital ambassador opens up. So both of us, me and Rafael, work as a digital ambassador that is creating content on KTH's different social media channels and the blog page. We share content about the student life at KTH, accommodation, budget tips, and basically in general, Stockholm and Sweden. Mm -hmm. So we have a fun group who collaborate together and we get opportunity to meet new people and also represent KTH at an international stage. So if this is something that interests you, do apply. And there are also other opportunities, for example, uh, to join the research projects, you can apply via the KTHS website where these kind of roles are posted, or you can connect with the researcher directly as well. In general, it's easier to organize these uh, positions when you're actually on campus. Yeah. So you you maybe you can wait until you're actually part of KTH. Yeah. Um. For example, um. Aside from the digital ambassador position that we do, um. I. Uh, actually took up a teaching assistant position in the sustainable urban planning and design program and it's something that I actually saw on the website and uh, I saw it and I read the pro the position description and the requirements and I said oh th this fits me I can actually do this and and it was actually pretty fun uh, you learn a lot from doing something and that you actually contribute to as well um, but of course we'd like to remind everyone that when you are studying at KDH Study is priority. Definitely. Yes. Okay. So let's proceed to the next question. Our next question. Okay. So this isn't a question, <laughs> but it's a statement. I'd like a platform to connect with other KDH students in my program. What? Uh, yeah, we have a platform and we got you covered. Uh, so uh, you can join KTH student community, an app powered by Goin. On the app, you will be able to connect with uh, other admitted and current students, uh, find people with similar interests, and start building friendships even before you arrive on campus. Uh, I'd highly recommend this app. Uh, it helped me find friends way before my arrival to Sweden. Install the app and find people from your program or from your country. There are many groups inside the app, so you can also join any group based on your interests. All admitted students have already received a link to join in our newsletter. So if you haven't already joined, Click, uh, check your inbox and start connecting with your uh, future peers. Pretty useful. Yes. Absolutely. And lastly, we'd like to tell you to stay in the loop. So aside from the upcoming webinars that Sai mentioned earlier, we have, of course, the social media platforms uh, as shown on the screen. Uh, if you are on social media and these specific social media, um, go ahead and click that follow button to see more information that we 
we'll be giving out to you. Um, specifically, a student perspective, wherein you can find out what a current KDH student thinks about their studies at KDH. You can follow the student bloggers and ask student questions online at the KDH website. And uh, you can also ask your questions uh, at info at kths.se after this webinar, of course. And the uh, recording for this webinar will be posted on uh, the same page where you have registered for it. So if you have any questions, go back to the webinars recording and you will find all the links and the QR code. So just go through the recording later. Okay, and lastly, um, so we're about to end this webinar and the, the question and answer uh, function of this webinar will remain open until we have all answered your questions. So yeah. ask away. Ask away, but for us, I guess we'll say goodbye. Yes. Yeah. And gratis again. Gratis. What is gratis. what is goodbye in Swedish? Hey Doa. Hey Doa. So, hey Doa, everyone. Hey, Doa. And thank you for joining this webinar. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.